Hey, everybody. Welcome to the He's Not Done Yet episode. I believe it's number eight. And we're so excited uh, that you're here with us today. And we want to thank you uh, for joining us. Remember, uh, if you have a prayer request or if you just want to visit, um, feel free. You can text me. You can call me at 501 339 8017. That's 339 8017. And I would love to hear from you. Uh, give us a praise report, miracle. Uh, if you need prayer, uh, we just would love to hear from you. This morning's scripture comes from Psalms 27 and 4. One thing have I desire of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and inquire in his temple. Let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and pray and uh, introduce our guest. And uh, we just want to lift up the Lord this morning. Lord, we love you. We thank you for today, God. We praise, praise God. you. Thank we you, Lord honor Jesus. you, Lord. We're praying today Amen. that this would fall on Speak good ground, me. God. I thank you so much for this, Lord, that, uh, you, Lord, that you would bless it. And Lord, we thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, we love you. Well, we have a very, very special guest today, and and um, you know, uh, you know, I arrived here in two thousand and eight, um, and as a young person of the Lord, um, you know, you you have mentors, and you have uh, he is truly one of my heroes, um, one of my, uh, you know. Um, you need somebody. You know, it's it's iron sharpens iron. Um, he, this particular saint of God, a good man, I tell you, and I, I I'm so excited that that I was able to get him to come by today. But um, he encouraged me so much and provoked me. You need somebody to kind of rub the hair the, the wrong way sometimes and, and encourage you to pray or, you know, you don't feel like you're praying enough. This man is a prayer warrior. Um, you know, I'm not sure what's going to be on his tombstone when he goes on to meet the Lord, but I can tell you this much. It ought to have prayer warrior on it somewhere, and I can tell you, and it's blessed me, <laughs> Brother Pomeroy. I'm going to tell you, you have encouraged me. You have loved me. Um, you have inspired me. And, you know, it truly changed my life because the, the prayer is is the fuel, and uh, I just I, I can't tell you. I, I know I would not be where I am today if it had not been for the prayer and, and for your encouragement and, and believing and, and encouraging me along the way. And thank I wanna, you, brother. I want to thank you for, for, for that. And uh, I truly love this man. He's one of my heroes. This is brother Seth Pomeroy, and uh, we want you to obey the Holy Ghost, brother. Just come on in. Thank you, brother McDougal. I would start, but I can't remember what happened in the womb. <laughs> Uh, I, I really can't. Uh, I am ecstatic. I want to open with saying a couple of words here. I hate, I hate religion, but I love experience. Woo. And I grew up uh, in an Episcopal church, and all I wanted to do was get out on Sundays and go ski. I mean, you're sitting there. And one day I was talking, and Dad was sitting behind me, and have you ever gotten an ear flick? <laughs> I got an ear flick so hard, I wanted to never come back to the church. Oh. And it was an Episcopal church. I loved everybody. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, I thought that, that the, 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 the bricks were going to fall out. It was an old, old church. And I, I, I didn't know whether it was going to collapse on me, but my desire was to get out of there and go skiing yeah. and on Sundays and just a little kid. But life traveled on, and uh, uh, we were a family of much. 
We had maids from Germany, maids from Scotland, maids from Sweden, different places all over the world. And our parents loved, we loved them, but we were just uh, uh, sent off to summer camps and boarding schools. And I never really knew my dad, but I can tell you what was in my heart we had everything. We had a mile and a half of brown trout stream. I had a tennis court in the backyard. I had everything, but I had nothing. And I couldn't figure out what I was missing. I knew I was missing something. I mean, people could say, you've got all this. What's, you know, what's wrong with you? I'm missing something. Well, I continued on life and... Uh, uh, wound up seeing psychiatrists in boarding school, was a good athlete, hated studying. <laughs> that was a disaster. Uh, and Dad, all he wanted to live vicariously through me because he struggled with grades, and he, he wanted to have a little genius here, and he got uh, Dumbo <laughs> the elephant. I'm sorry. It was just... It, it was sad. And one day, we went to a well-known boarding school in New England. They're all quite well-known. And we went to Berkshire School and sat down with the headmaster. And Dad was all proud. And the headmaster, you know, in those days, they said, Mr. Pomeroy, to this little kid. I was a fat little boy. And I, you know, yes, sir. And... He said, tell us about your summer reading. I'll never forget this. And I had to come up with something, Mickey Mouse, and I, that wasn't going to work, or <laughs> Bugs Bunny. You know, these comics, they didn't count. So I came up with Moby Dick. What's that? Dick. And that didn't go over too well because he said, well, Mr. Pomeroy, you read Moby Dick? And I... Oh, Dad was beginning to gulp like he'd got a goldfish down his throat. <laughs> and it was really kind of a very, very tough time. Uh, so I said, well, some guy got strapped to the back of the whale and um, critique it for me. I, what's critique mean? Well, what happened is Dad, you know, we realized it was the end of that interview. <laughs> 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 and stood up. And we walked out the door, and this is something that molded me the wrong way, but I, I, it turned for good. Dad looked at me. He had eyes that could cut like swords, and he had them sharpened that day. <laughs> he, said, he said, son, you will never amount to anything. Well, I bought it. And I went to sleep on my SATs in boarding school. I didn't care. I thought, okay, I'm going to amount to nothing. And I did. And when I, I just barely graduated, I was the first kid that was ever captain of all three sports, skiing, soccer, and lacrosse. And, and the teachers, back in that day, they gave you favor if you were an athlete. Right, that's right. <laughs> Nothing's changed. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Pomeroy, come on in here. We'll get you through this, this chemistry test. Uh, take it home. <laughs> Just get a sticky on it, <laughs> and we can get you out of here. Yeah. So I did. I mean, you know, if anybody else had had that privilege, it wouldn't have worked. But anyway... So I finally uh, uh, was, was, was on my way. Uh, I graduated, and of course I wandered around. I was messed up, and just upstairs again, we had, what was I gonna do next? Well, I got very involved with tennis, got on the semi-pro circuit, worked hard, but I, I would have done pretty well, but yeah, yeah, the idiot up here wanted to drink every night. So I got drunk every night, and then I'd walk out on the court like I'd been hit by a meteorite, and that didn't work very well. And finally, I started having morbid anxiety attacks, just terrible. I mean, I'd pull over on I-95 and hop lay on the top of the roof. I mean, you, if you've ever had an anxiety attack, you think you're going to die. I mean, you really do. They're morbid. Yes, sir. 
sir. And so I was running into those, and a friend of mine, I got back to Connecticut after traveling the country with tennis, and he said he was the Yale tennis coach, and we were very close friends, and he said, Seth, would you come teach two weeks with me at this gunnery school in Washington, Connecticut? And I said, sure, and I had a blast. I love teaching. I just love teaching. And when that ended, the anxiety attacks pounded me. This was God Almighty yeah. hammering me. Right. Don't kid yourself. He will hammer you if he's trying to get your attention. And yes, if he doesn't, you might not be here anymore. He wanted my attention, and he got it. I was willingly admitted to a mental institution in 1970, and uh, it was terrible, just terrible. I was having more panic attacks. I was losing a desire to live. My dad had given me a huge inheritance, never talked to me about it. Here, I mean, money's nothing if you don't know what you're doing with it. It's, it's a curse or it's a blessing. It was a terrible curse in my life. So there I am in the mental institution, and the worst thing that happened, these people came to me, are you a schizophrenic? What kind of, what's your problem, sir? Well, I mean, you know, that starts to beat on you. I'm a schizophrenic, what am I? And it, it plays with you. So when you're in a mental institution, you continue on down. And I was in there for almost a year. And just, you know, no, the only person that came to see me, it was crazy, she was at Princeton and a, dear friend was a girl named Marjorie who married Stan Smith, the famous tennis player. And so she'd, Seth, how are you? How are you? I'm not doing well. I'm not doing well. It was, it, it was a crazy, crazy time. And when they overdosed me, they did overdose me in the mental institution to quiet me down. And I took off uh, down the hall. I was so out of it in my birthday suit. <laughs> yeah, oh, my, my birth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they took me. I didn't even know what was going on, and they took me to a place. The I didn't even know what was happening. They put me in a, a room, apparently. Yeah. And it was the lockup room, and I was there for three days. I didn't know anything. I didn't know, I wasn't hooked up to any reality, but here's what happened, here's what ripped me. I was laying on that bed, I was told it was the third or fourth day, and all of a sudden, in walks my family, a couple of nurses carrying a coffin. This was a live vision of hell, and I was in the coffin, I mean, just like we're here. So they opened the coffin, and I looked down, there I was. And that was all fine. But all of a sudden, my body went into flames. And apparently, I started screaming with all my might. And I, 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 the best I can remember. And the doctors, the next thing I knew, they were beating me on my chest really hard. I was 22 years old. And then I finally came out of it, and for eight days... My arms wouldn't work from the effects of the drugs, and they finally came back. But I was starting to wonder, is there a God? Is there a God? There's got to be a God. There's got to be a devil. There's got to be a hell. I was in hell for a short time. Right. And then when I got out of there, there was a woman that was, we were friends, and her name was Terry Rosen. And her husband was the all-star player in the 50s, Al Rosen, for the, I guess, Cleveland Indians. But she was in there with her problems, and she got mad at me one day. She said, Seth, when are you going to stop this God business and, and, and look at you've got one of the best doctors in the country? And I realized, yeah, I do, but Terry, there's got to be a God. And she got mad at me. Well, here's the deal. Uh, about five months later, I walked out of that mental institution. I knew I'd die there, didn't know what I was doing, living in pure fear, and I picked up the newspaper. I went to Denver to visit my sister. They let me do that. 
Anyway, I picked up the paper, sports section, baseball wife, wife of famous baseball player, takes her life in Philadelphia, and I freaked out. Terry Rosen leaped out of a building, took her life back in 1971 or two, and I was, this was really getting my attention. Anyway, I'm, I'm jumping around here. I don't mean to. Uh, but anyway, I went to Denver to visit my sister. I was 140-some pounds. <laughs> uh, not much there. If the wind blew, I'd go the wrong way. But anyway, I got out there, and my sister said, Seth, there's a Pentecostal minister upstairs. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Ooh. Hallelujah. Ooh. Well, I went up there with my glazed eyes, my super mustache, my all my lovely hairs hanging off my face, I thought. And I walked in with her, and they looked up from there. They were eating dandy dogs. I will never forget it, trying to kill themselves on dandy dogs. But anyway, they looked up at me, and I know there was a fear. Because, you know, glassy eyes, wild man, here I am. And they said... Uh, our son will pick you up and take you to church on Sunday. And I said, yeah, okay. So I went to, uh, I went to church, and I wasn't extremely interested. I saw all these high hairdos and fat little girls, and I dated gorgeous woman in the world, and I thought, well, I don't want to be here. Well, here's what happens. The pastor saw me, uh, Bishop Heyman, and he said, he was watching a lady and her daughter do this woo-woo stuff over my head. It was weird stuff. There's weirdness everywhere in, in some churches. And I just, help, you know, what am I going to do? And anyway, Bishop Heyman was sitting watching, and he said, you're Seth? I said, yeah, Seth, come on up here. I want to talk to you. Well, he introduced me to the greatest thing on the planet, but I didn't yet know it. He said, now, have you gotten the Holy Ghost? I said, no, I've accepted Christ at least six times, gone out and got drunk, and uh, that was a disaster. I mean, you know, there's nothing there. He comes to us. We don't go, hey, Lord, I accept you, you know. Uh, one toke over the line, you know, here I am. And uh, so it didn't mean much, but he gave me the whole Acts 2.38 scripture. Amen. Repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the Holy That's Ghost. Right. Well, yeah, okay. Hmm. He said, do you, do you have any money? I said, yeah, I got tons of it. I thought it was crazy. Well, anyway... <laughs> Um, I did, <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> Whoop-you-do. Anyway, uh, <laughs> this, uh, uh, what happened is I came back to church that night, and I, a week later, all the pro tennis players were in town for a tournament. And I knew a few, and a friend said, Seth, I've got the girls and I've got the drinks. I paid for them all. Let's go have a great time. And what happened is I went in there, and I tell you what, I had my moment, and I paid attention to it. God ripped me. I said, Jim, the girls are yours. The drinks are yours. If I don't get to the house of God in five minutes, I'm going to be dead. Huh? What? I said, yep, I know it. I feel it. I got to get out of here. So the guy reaches in his pocket, gives me a quarter. He says, put it in the plate. So I got out of there, and I got to the church that night, and so help me, conviction was ripping and tearing. I didn't look around at the surroundings. I repented of my sins, and I was baptized in Jesus' name. Didn't get the Holy Ghost. People back east had told me to speak in tongues, just uh, blah, 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 you got it, you got it. I didn't have it, but it took me three months, and I got the whole, I'm about to shout, where can Ooh. I go? Um, wow. I got to sit still here. I, I, but anyway, 
it, it, it was so, so powerful and so real. And that was 51 years ago. Hallelujah. 51. And I'll tell you what. I never, I, I, I married my wife, I, I, we don't have enough time here, uh, I kidnapped her out of Texas, uh, it was a great marriage, she passed away last year of cancer, we have great, great kids, and I'll tell you what, it, it, it's, it's, so, it's so real, but the thing I want to explain, after I got the Holy Ghost, then what? Then what? Right. Prayer, 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 right. prayer. I could go on with saying prayer 20 minutes. Right. Fiery anointed prayer. Right. John said, he who comes after me shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Mm -hmm. And fire is what I've all my life, I've been a screaming nutcase in prayer but what do they do at these ball games? They go home with no voices, their team lost, and then they take something to calm them down. They don't have any. The world is an empty place. There's not anything out there. It's all in the power, power, power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And I want to, uh, I, I was so concerned about my three children, my wife, and I'll tell you what, I... I would not stop every night having five to ten minutes of family prayer. The kids were always, or my wife, honey, every night, one of them had homework, one of them had this, and I just smile like a happy guy, and we're going to pray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> and... We had prayer every single night. And some nights we had uh, testimonies, and the kids would look at me like a deer in headlights. Did God do anything for you today? Is your heart still beating? Mm-hmm. Good, good. Is that a good testimony? Uh-huh. Well, tell me about it. My heart still beats. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but anyway... I would not let go of prayer. We didn't let our kids fellowship a lot. And we just went on uh, every single night. And I became a tennis teacher in the Holy Ghost uh, and just met anybody and everybody, witnessed to anybody and everybody. I, I'm missing a lot of things here, but it was just such a supernatural journey. And then we moved down to Arkansas in 1997 for some reasons. And the kids have just bloomed. They've, in the old days, it was, there's Seth Pomeroy. Who are those three? And the lady. That's his family and wife. We went around all over the states out there to, uh, speak at full gospel business meetings. And they didn't believe what I had to say. But I said, why do you want me? They said, you're the only one on fire. Well, boom. I mean, right. you know, delivered the Holy Ghost. And uh, Jesus name baptism. Why is it re so rejected? Jesus is hated, hated That's right. of just about all men. And I tell you what, I just put everything I had into that. Hallelujah. And we had people crying. I'm not a preacher. Peter gave his testimony about it. He almost got killed. He had to go down to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. That was a bad deal for him. Right. And all those animals coming down. God said, there's nothing that's not unclean. And then poor old Paul, when he got converted, I mean... They were after him, too. He, right. And then the truth saints didn't know if he was going to get killed. by. The, it was a mess for Paul. In other words, testimonies were given by both these men. They had to be. And so I give my right. testimony, and that's the, the power of God. I mean, if you don't have this experience, right. get it. That's right. There's real churches. There's phony ones. There's all kinds of stuff, but seek it out. Search it. And it's real. Anyway, I went on. Uh, this was. Uh, 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 how's our time? I'm sorry. Oh, you're doing okay. good, brother. Okay. Yes, well, sir. I got invited 
17 times to go on Trinity Broadcasting. And the lady, I said to her, I said, why do you keep having me back? We don't believe in the same things. She said, you're the only one that's on fire. <laughs> I said, really? I said, well, how can I not be on fire? This Holy Ghost is fire. That's right. That's right. Amen. So then came a big day. Uh, the, uh, uh, the national show wanted me. It was going to be done in Denver, and they wanted me to be the first guest and I'll never, never forget this. A, a really nice guy named Laverne Tripp and his wife, this is back in 91 or so, they were interviewing me, and we had 7 million viewers out there. It was the, 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 the show, the yeah. big show, and I, I had no tension. I was just cooking inside, and I, I, I just, Laverne said, now, Seth, tell us when you came to the Lord. I mean, you know, everybody's listening. Tell us when you accepted Christ as your Savior. Well, Laverne, yeah, I did it. I accepted Christ as my Savior and went out and got drunk that night. Well, I, liquor. Yeah. He said, I've never heard anybody celebrate their salvation that way. <laughs> <laughs> it was quiet. It was quiet. And I said, Laverne, let me tell you what happened. And they were looking at me. People were looking at me. And I didn't care. I said, I'm going to tell you what happened. I got on the runway for what is the real salvation, Acts 2.38. And I mean, nobody disputed it. They didn't shut the show down. And I said, I repented. I was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and received the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. Amen. That's a different game. God called me. I didn't just decide to go, hey, Jesus, I'm here. I accept you. I did that six times and kept drinking and messing around with people. And that was a horror show. And But God got hold of me and shredded me. And thank God he ran me through the fire, Woo. his fire. That's right. And that's the only way I got in. And I've in 51 years, I have never, never looked back once. Uh, the person in the Bible who looked back got pretty salty. Right. Um, Lot's right. wife <laughs> yeah. turned to a pillar of salt. Right. But anyway, there's no. What are you going to look back at? What are you going to look back? What's back there? Right. Well, we're living in a, a world that today is just upside down, corrupt, horrible, and the only way out is Acts two thirty eight, right. fueled with fiery, fiery prayer. I don't know anything else, and prayer, prayer is it. I look back at my three kids now, Seth, amazing son, uh, running our land business. He is also a principal of 408 little rascals, great kids, great kids, of the school here. Uh, Kara's his, uh, works hard for the school and works for our land business. And Sharon is in Maine. In fact, I'm going to see her next week oh, uh, with, me, with Wade, me, her yeah. husband. Pack and, me in your suitcase. Uh, you want to go in my suitcase? <laughs> you won't get Take there. Me with you, you, you won't get there alive. I can promise you that. Uh, and I, I don't know whether God will raise you up. <laughs> but anyway, it's 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 all exciting, and we'll yes, be with sir. Sharon and Wade next oh. week. And uh, the girls, they're all singers. My Grandkids, third generation, Pentecost, unbelievable. That's right. They're so far talented. I don't know why God, I'm going to say it the wrong way, born to me. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I guess it was just to have kids and grandkids that would really live for God. Oh. Of course, my life is really built on prayer. I'm in the land business with my son. We have an invention. We're hoping to get out there but god god what can i say this is this is reality there is none go look for it there were four thousand cases of people getting psychotherapy not one got help what you get is a little feel good while you're talking to the doc and then you go out and it's black again 
But I've had some fiery trials in this walk. Just this summer alone, two total car wrecks and wound up with a brand new Toyota Highlander. That's great. But I'll tell you what, it's God, it's God, it's God. And I feel at 75, I ain't done trying to get ready for the next phase right. in the name of Jesus Christ. Woo. I'm wired, I'm fired, I better shut down before something breaks here and burns out. Oh. But <laughs> I love my kids, and again, I mentioned, I think I mentioned my wife passed last oh, year of cancer, sweet, but she was a great lady, oh, and great, uh, great, great, great. I, you can, you can die with a spouse or rise up and do what you can, and that's yes, what sir. I've chosen to do. Yes, sir. But anyway, thank you. I... I covered a few things and <laughs> yes sir well we sure do appreciate you so much brother Pomeroy. you blessed us today and what an awesome awesome uh testimony and we're just so honored that you came today and and shared that with us and uh how his family has touched my life i tell you i can tell you one story after another the prayer meetings and the the time spent with God, and, and I tell you, it's just been wonderful, and I want to say thank you, and, and just real quick, I want to go what he was talking about. You know, it's so important that we, um, you know, like what he said, you know, about being baptized in his name, you know, nothing ever changed in my life until I went down in the name. name. And, uh, you know, and, and so Peter preached this message and he asked them or they asked Peter, you know, what shall we do? And Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall, or excuse me, yep, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, Amen. E even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And we just want to encourage you. And I tell you what, you know what? I want you to listen to my pastor. He's fixing to sing a song, and it's called Worth. You thought I was worth saving, so you came and changed my life. So you cleaned me up inside You thought I was to die for So you sacrificed your life So I could be free So I could be whole So I could tell everyone I know Oh, you thought I was worth saving Yes, you did Thought I was worth dying for. 
you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me 